Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are once again. It is Monday, and this is June the 22nd. This is Clyde J. Kell, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, Episode 51. And I'm here with my two best artist friends, as I always say, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. All right, thank you two for joining me, keeping me from being lonely each week. <laughs> okay, the theme for this episode is social media. Not social media in the sense of marketing or strategies, as in the past we've talked about. It's more, this episode is going to be more geared toward artists of our generation who didn't grow up with the internet and didn't grow up with social media. And now all the things that you're seeing on there on Facebook and Twitter and, and uh, whatnot, the, the nastiness, uh, the animosity, the, you know, it seems like everybody is picking at each other. And as an artist, why do I want to participate in that? Why do I want to participate in that crap? My point is don't participate. You don't have to participate, but you should use social media for your advantage and use it. Think of it as a large megaphone to present your art to the world. And some of the recommended videos, if you go to uh, www.talkartpodcasts.com, that's talkartpodcasts.com, you'll see some of the recommended videos listed there. Uh, one of the videos from our friend uh, Gary, Gary V, Gary Vanacek, he talks about the truth about social media. I very much like his attitude. Uh, social media is attention. And he says in that brief little clip that if it disappears, he'll find something else. He'll go wherever the attention is at. And that's what it's all about. It's about attention. Diane, you want to want to add any more comments to that? Or? Yeah, I mean, uh- that's what you have to do. You have to find wherever the attention is. And if it's not on, you know, YouTube or not on Instagram, then you have to find the next thing that it's going to be on. And that's, you know, you have to keep up on all this stuff all the time. It's like, it doesn't, it's not, uh, doesn't stay st- static. I mean, stat, um, what am I saying? It doesn't, st- <laughs> doesn't stay the same all the time. It's constantly changing and you never, get you have to keep up with it all because otherwise you'll get lost 
Absolutely. And as, <laughs> as an artist, uh, it is the great, one of the best tools ever because, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, I sometimes do what I call vanity checks. I like to check up on Google. I Google my name just to see how many different sites I'm on and how many different sites come up. And all a, a good percentage of my Facebook postings come up, uh, Twitter postings come up, and uh, LinkedIn now. Quite a bit of LinkedIn comes up. I've been posting a lot on LinkedIn development community there and um and instagram comes up now had i not been posting on any of these places i i wouldn't have you know they wouldn't have been there and along with all of my traditional platforms that i'm on fine art america red red bubble and society six and art pal uh these all come up too in a mix the point is um i recall several years ago I think it was about 1992, 93. I attended a uh, seminar and it was just when the internet was just coming about the web and the presenter made a very bold statement. He says, if you are a business or any kind of business, regardless of what you sell, but if you are in a business and you do not have a website within 10 or 15 years, you will be obsolete. And I thought, wow, what a bold statement. And a lot of other people in the room, they kind of grumbled, you know, said, what? You know, because at that time, the internet was just getting getting uh, developed. Of course, you know, Gary, Gary Vanacek, years later, he also, uh, you know, he talks about, you know, and, and gaining attention. As an example, look at Kodak. Kodak has almost disappeared as a company. They were their premier company for your for photography, for your film and cameras and whatnot. Kodak did not jump on board the internet. They tried to stay the same old traditional method, and they had their film developing kiosks, you know, and they gave out the little booklets to put your pictures in, you know, and everything. Kodak is almost gone. I mean, they're, they're non-existent, and this is due to the Internet. The Internet is a great disruptor. It's a disruptor in our society, but it can be a bad disruptor, too. Along with the good comes the bad. However, as I say, us as artists, we, we have to take an adult attitude, <laughs> and not too many people do that. <laughs> yeah. It's very difficult. But you have to take an adult attitude. You you do not have to participate in all the animosity. You just absolutely do not have to participate to take advantage of the Internet and to take advantage of social media. Constance, you want to add anything to that? Yeah, um, you're right about that. Uh, you have to. There's always going to be people who squeak a lot. And that's what they like to do. I guess they're bored and and I don't know why they like to be that way, but they do. Um, and in order to have a business, you need to, to be present, present on Facebook or the, the applications of your choice, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, uh, TikTok, whatever platform you like to use, because some platforms are easier for some people than others. In some platforms, you get more reactions than you want to get. But whatever platform is the one you like to use, then you're going to get different kinds of reactions. What you have to do is, though, is not let yourself be bothered. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if you get reactions, that's a good thing. Even if they're bad, you just have to learn to take it with a grain of salt. You know, that's just part of putting yourself out there and not let yourself get discouraged. Just don't pay attention. Because some people just don't have better things to do other than to be mean. <laughs> it's just part of the Internet and the whole thing. So, 
you, yeah, that's a, that's a good summation. That exactly. Like I said, we, you have to be an adult. I mean, I remember when I was growing up and, uh, I, uh, went and did something that my friends did or whatever, which was very negative. And my mother, you know, would ask me, well, well why'd you do that? Well, you know, Joey went and did it. Oh yeah. So, uh, just because Joey does, it doesn't mean you have to do it. Are you going to jump off a cliff? If Joey jumps off a cliff, I mean, Oh yeah. this was an election. That one. Yeah. This was a, the lecture that I always received from my mother. It's the same th attitude you've got to use on social media. You have to, you know, just because you see some jerk, you know, posting, you know, kill so-and-so blah, 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 blah. In fact, if you see any posts like that, I block people that, because I just won't tolerate uh, posts that advocate the murdering and and, and uh, the destruction of uh, of other humans. Yeah, and most of the time, when you go back later, those people had you you can tell that they've been kicked off of the that particular application because they've been doing that, and somebody reported them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. yeah. So, so, uh, but you have to use just you know, like I said, you don't have to participate. But you can still util utilize the service, and it is important because you cannot absolutely, if you want to have a legacy after you have departed this earth and you want people to know that you were an artist and that you created works of art, uh, if you're not on the Internet, you're going to disappear. You're going to be obsolete. You might get lucky in some uh, 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 historical art, art historian may come across a, a piece of your work in a, uh, in a uh, uh, thrift shop somewhere and wonder who the heck this person is. But chances of that happening are, are like winning the million dollar lottery, you know? <laughs> so, Hopefully they won't paint over the top of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So being on the internet, establishing yourself on the internet is the key. And it's about attention. I know there are a lot of artists that you hear it all the time, especially these coaches are trying to get you to sign up for their program, you know, how to make money, you know, make money from your art. And I'm sure there are some artists that are making money, but from their social media accounts, from Instagram and Facebook and whatnot, but that takes a tremendous amount of effort to get to that stage. What we're, what we're talking about is establishing yourself, establishing a legacy. And that's the goal that I've uh, gone going for. And that's, that's, that's my attitude is, Hey, Hey world, here's my art. Here's what I do. And then when I leave, because unlike anything else in the world, and I know I see Diane rolling her eyes because she's probably heard me say this before. Unlike anything in the world, what you post on the internet stays there. It will be there forever and ever and ever. So if you establish yourself as a crier, as a crybaby, as a complainer, as a hateful person, that's going to be there forever and ever, ever. Unlike when we're, teenagers you know we all go through life and hopefully we may while we get older we may retain our core values but everything else we did was pretty wild you know, back then when we were younger and we don't want necessarily a lot of people to know that you know you mature and you and you change well unlike if you do that on the internet and you post things like that on the internet it's there forever and ever it's not going to change and so maybe 15 years from now, you have an opportunity to get into the uh, museum of uh, the Art Institute of Chicago, or maybe the Guggenheim, or maybe the Whitney. And they, of course, they want to go back and they want to see, you know, what you've been doing. The first thing they do is they search the internet and they find all of those ridiculous posters that you did 20 years ago. Well, wait a minute. Maybe we don't want that person. So you've, you've cut your own throat. Now, the fact that you might have already, I know maybe some listeners said, oh, okay, I've screwed them. I've already done it. No, you can bury those posts. You can bury them with lots of, because, you know, if you only have one or two really nasty posts that you've, you've out of anger put up there 
in response to somebody doing something or something that you don't like, but then you've got 50,000 positive posts. Believe me, that, that goes a long way. Diane, you want to add anything to, to that so I can quit rambling? <laughs> <laughs> I think um, a lot of times people think that, you know, they're on the Internet and you're, they're kind of anonymous, and so they say things that they normally wouldn't say. And it's not really like that, but, I mean, I was always taught, you know, if you don't have something good to say, don't say anything, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. So, I mean, you kind of have to keep that in mind because, you, like you said, you don't want people to think you're hateful or whatever. But um, there's no reason not to – I mean, people can have discussions without um, putting each other down, without being so negative and – you know, I mean, everybody's got a right to their own opinion and a, a right to voice that opinion. Absolutely. And there's no reason to be hateful towards one another because they have a different opinion than you have. And you can be civil to each other. There's no reason to be nasty about it. So I think that's a big problem that's on the Internet right now, especially there's a lot of stuff going around. But um, Yeah, I we've – in this country, we've, uh, we've forgotten the uh, – the the civility we forgot the i remember when i was in the political class in the high school we had a teacher who was very very good at uh getting us motivated to get two sides of an argument and he used to always say always remember you can agree to not to agree but you don't have to be hateful to each other <laughs> yeah you, you know you can agree to not to agree you know in other words that person, you you don't like that person's opinion, but that doesn't mean you want to wipe them off the face of the earth. Right. Uh, they have the right to have that that opinion, you know. And <laughs> I, I have a I have a saying for those opinion people who have opinion. Everybody's got one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, but everybody has a right to it. You know, that's what's great about this country. You know, but. You, you I know, I know what you're thinking. I'm going to say it. I'm going to, I'm going to say you, it. You don't have a right to be mean to each other because of it. You know, it's it's our God-given right in this country to have our opinions and our beliefs, and that's what makes this country great. You know, to do that, but it's not our right to beat each other up or be mean or or violent or destroy. It's you know, it, it's it's okay to have your opinion. For us older gen, uh, the older generation, it's that's very disturbing, and it's depressing. You know, to see mm -hmm. all that, and that's like in that one recommended video. It said why the uh, you know millennials are uh, so uh, you know addicted to uh, you know social media, and the discussion was you know these guys said they they first of all they're most of them, they come from an entitled entitlement. Like they feel it's, they're entitled to this or that. And so they meet up on Twitter and whatnot. And then someone proposes a, you know, go off and, you know, burn some monuments down, tear some monuments just, down or whatever. Right. And, I just think that's really sad. It's and they, very, very sad. And they, they, uh, you know, they do it they immediately they're taking selfies and they, and post them on social media and everybody and that's oh, really wow, look at yeah, yeah wow look at that you know look at me you know and then, and then they get likes and they, they yeah. things outrageous just for you know the, the 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 likes and what happens is you know Gary Vanacek mentioned mentioned this he said it comes from a sense uh, of an inner self insecurity they're insecure about themselves, you know. And well, I don't know about all that, but I just don't think it's very smart to tear up a monument and then stand there and take a picture of yourself and post it up to publicly. Oh, I tore up a monument. Here, I have a selfie of it. <laughs> the police have got you. I mean, we if they were in China and they did that, they would put them under the jail <laughs> and they would we never get out again. We didn't I mean, see they were in town. That's the beauty of this country, <laughs> you know. Other countries, you would not be able to get away with that. Period. You yeah, know, it, so. com it comes from a, yeah, it comes from a, a a central a core lack of education of of history, 
and and understanding. But more importantly, it's it's seen, it's accentuated and it's magnified by social media. So, and that's what I think uh, honest working, hardworking artists uh, they see that and they say, "Wait a minute, more like our friend Mark Barker. He just he doesn't want anything to do with that." You know, and, and it's a shame because. Well, I feel bad for the artists who made the monument, you know, because it is a work yeah. of art. They tore it up. Yeah, that too. Yeah, exactly. You know, and so, so this, um, you. Protesting is one thing, but when it goes, comes down to the violence and burning of businesses and breaking into the stores and stealing, that is not, that's not even cool. Right. Now I don't want to. Do, I want to uh, divert the conversation. I don't want. I, I don't want to make our listeners depressed because there is. Believe me, if you if you wa- if you watch enough of uh, YouTube, and, I really don't watch it a lot. I just and listen just to not. Yeah, you know, cool. enough of the you know social media. It's it, it's in your face all the time, and it's uh, it's hard to keep from getting depressed. However. In the back of my mind, I always say, well, I'm still going to to post on Facebook. I'm still going to post on LinkedIn. I'm still going to yeah. post, post on because these are the platforms. These, this is, I'm. De- these are our tools that we use to further our business. Exactly. This is that, but it's, it, artists in general um, are really important in societies and keeping, um, our human, our humanistic qualities about us. I mean, we're not animals. We're, you know, we're humans, and we have a lot of feelings and um, things. That, and but the artists really um, help society maintain their dignity, I guess, and um, find beauty in things and make life better. Absolutely. So when all this animosity and stuff is happening, artists are even more important to have, you know, their work out there and for people to see it. So they're not being inundated constantly by all the negative stuff. Absolutely. In fact, um, uh, what I, you know, when I mentioned, you know, uh, artists, we have artists of different opinions. It's not. I'll say, different. I will take the statues. They can put them out here in my pastures. Thank you very much. I would love to have them out here. <laughs> they don't want them. I want them. <laughs> but the the uh, and, yeah, we're not saying you know don't express your opinion. Do it with your art. That's how artists traditionally express their opinions. Yes, you know? they have, and all and, through at the ages they have. And if you want it, and if you want to have the greatest impact. Get it out there on the internet. Get it out there on Facebook and everything. And believe me, you will find people who will agree and they're pick, they're pick up on what you're trying to express in that art. You know, guaranteed. Um, I'll give you another example. One of my favorite artists, uh, Caravaggio, which everybody knows about him. Well, let me tell you, Caravaggio was unknown for almost 300 years. Caravaggio was a bad boy. He was a serious bad boy. He was in trouble. He was, he was after, they were after him for murder and, and his, uh, critics completely tried to wipe him out of history. They completely bad mouth him. A lot of the major art, art critics and art collectors of that time. And it took almost 300 years before him to be rediscovered. Yeah. So this process well, of tearing down statues, this process of changing, cha- uh, of changing history. We- well, Frida Kaho, her, her art was very, very, had a very, uh, a huge voice. And her husband also, he worked in New York and did murals and they ended up tearing them down or painting over them because they were very political. So, and then they also hid people in Mexico. Uh, so, artists, you know. So my, or, my point was, Frida, Frida Kahlo is a good one. Colt uh, is, is another example. Her and her husband and, both. And uh, my point with talking about Caravaggio is, had the internet existed back then, he wouldn't have disappeared. 
So as artists, we have this wonderful tool to mm -hmm. develop our legacy. So if you have an opinion that doesn't necessarily agree with, with the prevailing attitude or, or your opinion is, is controversial, go ahead and put your art out there. Put it out there because you will develop your legacy and it will be there. And maybe 50 years from now, maybe 100 years from now, someone will, you'll at least be known. So don't, don't let this nastiness, don't let this bad behavior. Be an adult. You don't have to participate. <laughs> okay. That's about all I got to say about that. Anybody else want to add anything else to that? Or? Well, it's about covers it, doesn't it? Yeah, about <laughs> covered it. Yeah. This may be a little bit shorter episode than normally, but uh, this was something that it really struck me. I had, I, I just, the more I thought about the, uh, you know, on, on social media was, uh, and thinking about so many of the artists that uh, artists that I know that are shying away from it, and they're they're when they have left this earth, they're going to disappear. There, and that will, that'll be sad. You know, we uh, we need uh, the art because, like Diane says, as humans, we we bring a certain dignity to humanity. All forms of art. You know, I don't necessarily agree with one particular form or another, but that doesn't mean that I want to see it erased or, or knocked away or, 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 you know, eliminated. No. Art is well, art. There's always art for, it's for everybody. I mean, there's something for everybody in art. Yes. And art is, you know. Is, what doesn't speak to one person speaks to another person. Exactly. Well, the final thing, I think we'll talk a little bit about, uh, did you listen to uh, Stefan Bauman's uh, podcast about artist block? Yes. Got any, I'm any, so glad I'm not blocked right now because it's a terrible thing when you get blocked. I hate it. This could be, this, well, you know, the, the, the behavior and the nastiness of uh, social media could create an actual artist block. That's why I, yeah, there, there has been a lot of people that I know I was. That are talking about that, that they're having right. a hard time creating. When, when it first started, I was blocked, but I got, I got out of it finally and I'm started painting again. So yeah, I was blocked when I first. And this, uh, with the COVID-19 and being, you know, locked, locked in and everything, I, I didn't. And then the riots and all the stuff, it didn't necessarily, it didn't block me. But it slowed me down. It gave me what uh, Constance said, I think, a couple of weeks ago when we were talking. It gave me the blues. It, gave, put, yeah. it put me in a funk, you know? Yeah. And I finally, I've, got, I've broken out of it, you know? And, and uh, It's one thing, if you want to stay home, you have the choice. But when you don't have the choice, it's a different thing altogether. <laughs> it's, you know, when somebody says... You have to stay home, and then maybe you want to go out and paint, but you don't have that choice. It's when the choice is taken away, that's when it, it kind of knocks you for a loop, you know, I think. Okay, well, let's, let's uh, wrap this episode up with checking on our goals. Did any of us complete our goals that we said we were going to do last week? I did not get my goal done. <laughs> I don't hurt. remember what I said. <laughs> no, no. I was going to do a out. I was going to do an evening painting outside, plein air painting. That and was. Have, and you're also. I've got. I've almost gotten it, everything together to get back out and do it, but well, I haven't then, done it. Well, and then your new goal, if you recall, was you were going to set up your uh, display to uh, for doing still lives in house. You were going to build your some kind of a backing or whatever. I'm working on it. Oh yeah. Okay. I've, I've started painting. I've got all the wood and I've put a layer of paint on one side. So I have to paint the other side and put the hinges on it. And Diane From, had said that she was, you know, continue organizing her studio and she, she said, I've, I've worked on that some more. It's still going to need more done to it, but I have to work in it for a while to see what well, else I need to do. Well, I received your picture, so that's going to be on our uh, on our YouTube, you know, a YouTube version. I'll be sure that she, I was going to put it in last week, but I'd already produced the episode, and then bingo, it pops in the email to me. So, 
<laughs> Late and a dollar short, but hey, we'll get it this time. <laughs> we get it. I got in this really neat cart. I got it's like one of those wire carts with a handle on it. It's take a it is the cat's meow. Take, <laughs> take, take a picture of it and send it to me. Okay, right. Yeah. After you get done so I can. It works it. really. It was. It's great. I like it. I got one cart before and it was too small. It didn't do. It doesn't work well. But I got this other one and it's a whole lot better. Well, I ended up. Uh, I've got one painting that's uh, an oil painting. It's still a work in progress, and I struggled. It was a fish, and I struggled and struggled and struggled, and I couldn't get the colors right. So I, I've laid it off to the side. I'm going to let it dry a little bit so I can, you know, because. Every time I, I got too much green in the thing, he's not that green, but he's <laughs> real green. I could, and it's like the more I, I feel like you're playing, Clyde. I've got a point. I tried to tone it down. He just got greener. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lay him off, let that green dry so I can paint over it a little bit. Then I did a uh, large acrylic painting because I received, uh, I received my new canvases. I usually, folks, let me tell you, I usually don't you know, recommend services, specific services, but these folks, I have got to recommend them. Okay. If you go, I, I should have put a link in our, on our, uh, info page, but they're called, um, artist brand canvas and you can find them at, uh, artist brand canvas.com. They are a small family owned business and they make American canvases. They are American products. And the the price was very reasonable. I got uh, a, a six pack of um, sixteen by twenties stretch stretch canvases, and it only cost like twenty eight bucks. And then of course it's thirteen dollars shipping. So I went and I calculated, and it's only about per canvas only about two dollars more than those cheap things that I were buying before. <laughs> So these are nice and sturdy. The wood is actually thicker, you know, and so I immediately had to do a painting on the canvas, and I'll, I'll put that up. I call it the Hope, and it was a canvas inspired by uh, a, a piece of work inspired by all the stuff that's been going on. It seems like our country, country is being ripped apart, and uh, in a lot of Native American cultures and other cultures, uh, when you see a cardinal, in your yard, it's it's bringing a sign of hope and peace. They say that uh, if you've if a loved one has passed away and you keep seeing the cardinal and it comes right up to your window, that's a loved one trying to send you a message to say, "Hey, everything's all right. I'm doing fine." And so I uh, several years ago, a cousin of mine had post from Indiana had posted a picture of a cardinal and an American eagle in a tree branch. And I did a watercolor of that. So this painting, the concept was like, the reason why I call it hope, uh, when I was in my funk, feeling kind of depressed, I happened to look out my window and there was a cardinal in the tree. And that inspired me to create this painting. It's, uh, I've got a torn uh, with holes in an American flag in there. And then I've got an eagle in the tree. His feathers are really kind of ripped a little bit. But then there's the cardinal right underneath of him. And the cardinal, you know, bringing a sense of hope. And so it was my, it was for me, it was very uh, spiritually uplifting for me to uh, create this painting. And I'll be inc including that in our uh, YouTube version so you folks, folks can see that. Um, we want to set some goals for next week. See, it got all quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think about it. <laughs> um, it can be a tiny goal. Hey, you know, it doesn't have to be anything major. I need to finish, finish set, finish my uh, backing thing for my still still life setup. Okay. And I still want to paint an evening sunset. Okay. One of the, one of the other or both. Send both would be great. Send me a pictures if you get them done, okay? And then All we'll right. Sure to include them in next week's uh, YouTube version. Diane, I know she's still thinking. Yeah, no, I think I'm gonna. I'm, I'm. Well, I've been trying to get things set up, so I'm gonna try to start start a new painting this week. Okay. In that in my new setup and see how it works. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> if you do that, then yeah, be sure to send me a picture. You know, and I think I'm going to continue. I wouldn't be finished, but. Well, no, uh, hey, work in progress folder would be 
would be fine. At least, you know, something that for our listeners, uh, can, uh, the YouTube viewers can, uh, can look at. I'm going to try to do some more art. I don't know how much more I'll uh, do, but I'm also going to work on a blog and I have not blogged in a long time in about four or five weeks, maybe longer. I have to, and I've got so many things that's happened. So many things that are going on. Uh, I am just busy as a bee with uh, creating works for art, inner and art contests, and I, uh, now art museum openings. I got notification that finally the, the art gallery in Zurich, Switzerland, that I'm associated with, they've opened up. And so my art is on display in that gallery for the entire month of June and July. And uh, so I get a lot of announcements and a lot of things to talk about in, you know, in, the, in the blog. I just got to sit down and make myself write it. Constance, you going to say something? You Yes, I did enter the little clay picture with the apple into the FASO monthly painting thing. Cool. That's it. That's how you do it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's... Nothing probably will happen, but hey, hey you're you never know. Awesome. You're trying. You never know. Okay. For this week, it's uh, for June the 22nd. Monday, June 22nd, this was episode 51 of the Artist Friends Podcast. And my name is Clyde J.K. And you've been listening to my me and my best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. I'm going to say goodbye to Diane and Constance. Bye, Clyde. Bye, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Good night, folks. And put your art out there. Get it on social media. Don't be afraid. Bye-bye. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.